Hey guys, welcome back to Maxplain to Dawn of War Unification Mod for Soulstorm. Today we are talking about the Chaos Demons. So it's another faction guide, this time the Chaos Demons. The Chaos Demons, um, if you want a brief description, is basically Chaos, all the different Chaos Demons, but without Space Marines, like the Chaos Space Marines. It's all demons. Um, they have a lot of special mechanics um, implemented so uh, it's going to be quite quite the stuff that I want to tell you they have like instability for the demons they have a special demonic power and a mark system to um, dedicate your army to one of the four chaos gods or stay undivided even so we will see all that in the replay not the replay the safe game I have prepared and here we are <laughs> in this chaos covered map um, before we go into the units and buildings, let's talk about resources and unit caps. Resources, they have the standard requisition uh, resource, but also demonic power, not standard power. You see it's plus zero. You are not gaining um, permanently uh, power with them. You only get it uh, via some means. Let's talk about requisition first. They generally get more power from their um, buildings, like from their shrines, they get um, if you cap a strategic point or a critical location or relic, you get plus 6. Done with a shrine, you get plus 11. If you upgrade the shrine once, it's 18, which is standard. But then, if you upgrade it twice, you get 36, so it's double. Um, instead of the 24, you get um, uh, for normal faction. So quite a lot of requisition. Um, but you need requisition to get the demonic power. You get demonic power... Um, we are building. If you build some u buildings, you get a little power gift, as if you would build a generator with uh, another factions. But your main uh, income is what you see here, like the infernal trade. You need these uh, warp signatures. And in these warp signatures, you can trade uh, requisition for power. The first one is 100 for 100 power and takes quite a long time. The second one, um, you need upgrades to unlock the, the second and third one, um, you get 300, uh, you pay 300 and get 250, so you lose some, but it's uh, faster. And the last one is even uh, worse, you get pay uh, 500 and get 400 out, um, but a lot uh, faster. The upgrades for power also increase or increase the, the time or it decrease the time needed to uh, do one exchange. So even if you're still doing only the first trade, if you do the upgrades, you can do the trades faster. You can also upgrade your um, requisition income as standard in the, the listening post, the demonic shrines. Um, then you can um, change back power to requisition, which I would never ever recommend because you lose resources even in the first one you pay 200 power to get 150 requisition and it gets worse you pay 400 and get 250 you pay 600 and get 400 so i would never use these uh, exchanges back to be honest only use them to get power as you see you can put them on overwatch you either can click them manually so to queue them up or you can put them on overwatch so it will um, give you some kind of um, a repetitive income you could say Okay, that's the resources. Um, one thing to resources uh, to note is that you can also build uh, stuff on a Slack deposits. It's called the Infernal Lab. The Infernal Lab is um, like a generator, but it generates a lot of requisition instead and can also do these trades. I should uh, tell you that these warp signatures are limited to three per HQ and provide a not so bad requisition income uh, themselves. So it's like more, a little more than capturing a point. So I would highly recommend building them as soon as you can and you can build them right away. Um, yeah, but I will talk more about them when I talk about the buildings. Um, so we talked about uh, resources, let's talk about unit caps. Unit caps are divided in lesser demons and greater demons. Your starting cap is 6 to 0, but you can increase this by building uh, the appropriate demon portals. The lesser demon portals will increase the cap by 4 of the lesser demons and the greater demon portal will also increase the cap by 4 for the greater demons. If you... yeah, how should I 
say that. Um, right at the start in tier one, you need to decide if you focus on lesser or greater demons. If you decide to focus on lesser demons, the unit cap in total will be 24 to uh, four maximum. So 24 lesser, four ma uh, greater demons. But if you decide to uh, uh, focus more on greater demons, the cap will be 18 to six. So a little more greater demons. And generally most people will focus on lesser demons as they are online much earlier in the game and the early phases in the game are more important, generally speaking. Okay, I think that's it about resources. Let's talk about the buildings. The buildings are your HQ, the warp gate. You can get uh, upgrades to uh, at least uh, to, uh, until tier 5. In tier 5 you will start to have this uh, little annoying <laughs> area here which uh, damages um, nearby um, units and will heal your own units I think. Most buildings, it's in the description, let's click on the worker. Most buildings have this um, in, the, in, the, in the bottom part here, demonic influence projects a fall aura that strengthens demons while hurting the morale of foes. Um, most buildings have a morale increasing aura around them. So um, I need to talk about it right now. Your standard demons have this effect which is called instability. Instability will... Uh, do I have someone around to show this quick? Um, not right now I guess. Um, let's build one extra and I can show that. Where am I? Here. If you get too far away from a uh, building of yours, you will start to uh, drain, lose morale. Chaos, Come on. Or am I too, too far advanced? Did I... Okay, I can show it here because I have some upgrades for the Furious, but in general um, they will lose morale and if they have no morale they will lose health so you need some upgrades and other means to keep them um, to keep them uh, full morale one way is to keep them close to buildings close to all buildings except for a few will have an aura around them which increase morale for your units the other thing that some buildings do is that they increase the maximum HP of units around um, I will have, when I um, finish up buildings, a graph for you of how much. In, generally, in general, like the warp gate will uh, increase the maximum HP of surrounding units, demons, not vehicles, by 6%. Uh, some other buildings like the portals, the doom pit and so on, and the shrines will increase it by 4%. And it all stacks multipli multiplicatively, multiplicate, basically it's, it's yeah. It's multiplied, not added up, so it's getting even better. It's a little bit better than adding up. Um, so 4% for most buildings and 6% for warp gates. But that's a little more about the mechanics. Let's talk about what the, unit, the buildings can do, actually. The warp gate is your HU, builds your worker, your f capping units, the Furies, the your only, one and only capping unit, and your heroes. Um, you also can decide if you want to worship one of the gods this will lock you to this god you can also choose not to do that and uh, stay undivided which has some benefits on its own if you did the upgrade you can uh, also call in demonic obliterators which is the standard obliterator the chaos marines had before unifications and unifications they got split up to multilators and something else so this is like the the old obliterators you could say and also um, they uh, once you tacked up to tier 5 you can have an apocalyptic event depending on if you choose minions lesser demons or greater demons and you can summon an infernal rift portal which is something I will talk about later some units and your HQ can summon in rift portals okay that's that let's talk about listing post it's your demonic shrine the demonic shrine is your primary uh, resource income you can upgrade it twice and you can research your um, requisition income this also has an aura of morale increasing and uh, hp increase 
Once you chose one of your worships, you can also put a mark on the shrine, which further increases the at least HP. Uh, I'm not sure about damage. Um, the HP of the dedicated units to that god and will decrease the HP of the units not dedicated to that god. Um, now is probably a good point to show on the graph on the screen where you see uh, the different health increases. I have one for the building vicinity uh, increases depending on the number of buildings in vicinity. You have this for the standard buildings and for the HQs. You probably never have 10 HQs uh, but uh, yeah in the bottom you have the number of buildings in the vicinity and then you have the percentages going up. You're probably never gonna have uh, 10 HQs in the vicinity but it's just to show uh, how it would look like and you see that it's like a little exponential growth that's why uh, because uh, you multiplicate these um, bonuses the mark bonuses are for uh, lesser demons 5% bonus and for greater demons 2.5% bonus also multipl multiplicated and the not dedicated units to that god will have a health decrease by 2% uh, for lesser demons and 1.5% for greater demons and let's now it's going to be interesting these mark bonuses are map wide so it, once you have a mark shrine all demons on the map will get the increase or decreased uh, health so the more shrines you upgrade the more hp you get so it's really really crazy on bigger maps you have then really big hp demons um, i'm not sure about how the damage is uh, changed by that maybe someone can tell me um, I can only see the HP values in the game. Um, one thing I want to talk about the mark bonuses is that um, even the undivided units will get a health decrease. So when once you chose a god and put marks on your shrines, even the undivided units will get uh, uh, the decreases, the maluses. Okay, that's about it. Let's talk about the warp signature one more time. Um, you can get up to three. I told you for each HQ. Um, they are rather cheap, 75 um, requisition and getting si seven requisitions. So you need about um, less than two minutes so that they, ha um, how should I say, got your money back. If you consider that they can, uh, can be, uh, how should I say, if you delete them, you get some money back. They are uh, even paid themselves in about 75 seconds. So why am I telling you that? Because you can put them anywhere on the map. They are very fast built, have the morale increasing aura, and you have an area of effect where you can build buildings, especially turrets. Turrets can't be placed anywhere. They need to be close to a shrine, a HQ, or one of these weapon signatures. So one way to um, play demons or the best way to play demons is put these warp signatures in the areas you want to attack and put on a turret or two next to it and then advance your attack from there. So you can retreat back once your units get instable. I'm talking, telling you that about resources uh, because um, I want to emphasize that it's a very good idea to put all three or maybe at least two, one, uh, two of these right at the start of a game and then if you want to have them anywhere else on the map just delete them in your base and put them anywhere else on the map they will pay themselves in 75 seconds so a little more than a minute so if you put them right in the beginning you will have uh, um, economy economy advantage uh, in the long run really fast okay that's about these let's uh, talk about the uh, portals you have the Lesser demon portal where your lesser demons are built. You have the tier one demons in the first row, and the pink horror is also tier one, and the uh, tier two horrors uh, uh, demons in the bottom side. You will also get some access to some exclusive horrors in tier three for corn and slonesh. Your crater demon portal you can see here. You have the crater hellspawn, which is tier three, and all the four. How should I say, big demons of the Chaos Gods in tier 4. Uh, these cost 2 um, population caps, so if you chose lesser demons, you will only be able to get 2 of these. If you have chose greater demons, you will get up to 6. Um, thing is, 
once um, it's it's summoning cost. Each fielded greater demon or prince increases the time required to summon other greater demons. So if you want to swam, then it will take quite a lot of time. That's a mechanic to <laughs> keep you from spamming the greater demons around the map and kill everyone. So it takes way longer to build more units. It, it also um, applies to the greater warp spawn. If you chose one of the marks, you will have um, a defiler variant of each god in the second row here, replacing the greater um, warp spawn. Okay, that's about it. Let's talk about research buildings. You have your dark circle where you first, once you build it, have to decide if you chose uh, lesser demons or greater demons and then have up to uh, seven, 16, 17, 17 different uh, researches uh, out of which you can pick 10. Once you have 10, you can't uh, uh, build more. It says you have 11 because the, the decision between greater and lesser demons is also one artifact. But uh, once you chose it, you can up, um, choose up to uh, 10 different um, researches. Some of the researches are dependent if you chose lesser or greater demons. I will talk about that in detail once we are in the tech tree. There I can show you when which upgrade is available and what it does exactly. The another, you could say, research building is the male Maledictum. The Maledictum has upgrades for your demon lord and for these uh, shadow fiends depending if you chose greater or lesser demons also i will talk about it in the tech tree what the different resources that will appear on this side will be the maledictum um, is also the area where you can uh, create a hell spawn which we will replace uh, the maledictum and you can also create uh, research that you can transform your demon prince and uh, your demon lord into the demon prince Another thing about the Maledictum, it's free to build, but you see it has only 20 HP, so it's killed uh, rather easily. If you build it next to one of these Demon Claw Obelisks, your turrets, it will have some damage resistance, but it can also erect ground, which uh, creates some obelisks here, Demon Fang Obelisk, which are similar to your Demon Claw Obelisk. Um, they also fire, and yeah, but yeah. Yeah, have less HP than your Demon Claw Obelisk. Let's talk about the Demon Claw Obelisk once we add it. These are very, very strong turrets. They cost 150 requisition, so really expensive, but they have high damage, morale decrease, I think, and in tier three, you can add on a Firebolt, um, which will not replace its weapon, but also give it another weapon, which is makes it really uh, destructive. Okay, that's about this. Another defensive uh, structure you have is this Eye of the Beholder. It's kind of a, m a mine, but kind of not. Let's uh, look at the description. This is infiltrated and it can uh, also detect infiltrated unit. And once it sees the unit, it will um, attack it and will decrease its morale. And give me a second. Besides physically perceived, while well, in the maze demon items uh, helping their morale, affects infantry and heavy infantry and commanders, but not um, vehicles, but will also trigger to vehicles and then will be gone away. These are really expensive, but will cripple a single um, squad or hero quite a bit. Um, never really used them myself, I have to admit, but uh, sound sound cool. The last building I want to talk about is the Doom Pit. The Doom Pit is some sort of magic well which has some different magic abilities which all cause demonic power and different, um, 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 how should I say, different values. Like this one is really expensive, the other ones are okay. And it's the place where you can get your tier 5 uh, except of the, um, where is it? I can't, the, the Hellspawn is your tier 5 uh, relic unit and um, one of these two are also relic units you can only get one of these either the, the hell spawn the uh, greater brass scorpion or the soul grinder um, if you stay undivided if you chose one mark uh, but i will talk about the uh, units later so um, interesting are these spells you have different um, wards and area of effect spells here depending on the god and um, this one will increase uh, the damage um, target area is blessed with the fury of corn. All that ends gain additional damage. 
Um, the Nurgle's blessing is that you get uh, health regeneration. For medium duration, Slanesh will give you um, will give you an target. Uh, how should I say? Silence. And Siege will give you a damage protection aura for a short amount, I think. For a long, okay. And then you have this um, undivided ki uh, kind of thing, creates a small circular area, teeming with energy chaos, um, instability protection, and morale restoration. All other infantry squads, even allied ones, okay, so this um, will give morale increase and morale. Um, protection for friendly units or all chaos units you could say but um, morale decrease for on all non-chaos units and this wild sacrifice is very interesting something I would myself never use to be honest um, you can target a commander even allied commanders that are not your <laughs> yours you can sacrifice them to get increased uh, unit caps to 30 to 5 and yeah with the the commander it it is cast and will uh, lose health and once he dies this effect is also will disappear uh, n I would never use it to be honest you can do it in team games to know your friends basically but that's the only use I have for it at least maybe you can prove me wrong and say that it's the most powerful ability on earth but it's also very very expensive okay let's see if I have everything um, I wanted to talk about Buildings? No, I wanted to talk about portals. Portals you can put on anywhere on the map. We'll create an uh, Infernal Rift portal, which is basically like a warp gate. You can put units in here and put another gate here and they can go in, even the really, really big units. Um, it will say, can also the uh, Rift... The both all, except the Hellspawn, Great of Buscar and Soul Grinder, but also Demon Princes and whatnot. So it's really, really nice to have it mobile on the map. We'll, um, some point just fail. Another thing you can do it, um, you can put it in the enemy lines so it will do some damage. Creates ability, temporal, magic, collapse, nothing is. Can also be used offensively, uh, inflicting morale damage and bouncing off all enemies in that get in close contact. So it has some knockback and morale decreasing aura. So really nice to have. Um, costs some demonic power as most abilities for the Chaos Demons do. Okay, that's the buildings. Let's talk about units. And when I talk about units, I will talk about them separately depending on the mark or the, the worship of the god you chose or if you stay undivided. We will start with the undivided faction, which is... Whoa. My PC is kind of dying here, but it's okay. Maybe I can uh, stop this a bit. Hope my PC uh, will... Yeah, okay. It's kind of... It's this unit here, the health one probably, that's causing the lags. So let's talk about the small units. You have the Lost Soul, which is your builder unit. All buildings are um, built like the Dark Elder ones. You just tip on it and they will build themselves. Um, this Lost Soul has also the special ability that it can decap enemy uh, um, points. So you can, one a viable strategy you could and may also should use is to uh, build your first building and then put it also right on marked um, to the enemy base and try to decap enemy point. It's rather frail. Uh, it starts with lesser speed HP than that here. Um, but you can use this plane shift ability, which is basically like phase shift of the Necrons um, to make it invulnerable to attacks for a short amount of time. And it can also jump. So you can jump in, decap, use this uh, plane shift ability and then try to run away. Really annoying for your opponent. Um, another effect this unit has, you can attach it to a demonic squad, like let's say these furies here, and the, the squad it's attached to will have uh, morale increasing, so instability protection. Really nice to have. Let's talk about commanders real quick. You can have your demon lord and your shadow fiends. You see I put two of each variant here. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I, I, sh I shouldn't uh, skip the camera here because <laughs> my game all <laughs> almost crashed here. <laughs> okay, but you can get uh, the demon lord and two variants. If you chose lesser demons, you can get all this different stuff around here. You can get kind of walkier stuff. 
And if you choose greater demons, you can make him like tougher. He's a bigger one, uh, has different abilities. Similar to the Shadow Fiends, where when you choose lesser demons, you can get an upgrade that allows you to get more Shadow Fiends, two additional of these uh, horrors here. You have these Shadow Fiends and you can different add different horrors, like purple horrors, effective against all targets, green towards, um, effective against infantry red horrors, effective against all targets, but also very effective against um, uh, buildings and stuff. So this is like a rocket launcher guy. Um, these are tier two and these are tier three. The same upgrades you have here, like the Shadow Fiends. Let's skip on over. Yes, I, this was the right one, this one. Skip on over, we have the Shadow Fiends that are bulkier and the uh, three added uh, horrors. The horrors are limited to three. And then you have this uh, Demon Lord here, which has um, some other abilities I will talk. Let's talk about them right now. You, have, you start with Flame Tongue, which is a targeted ability with short range, but has a short range of targeting, but... Uh, wow. My game is almost dying. A big range of uh, area of effect, so it will. Um, you need to target target it well, so it does a lot of damage. If you have some upgrades for the the buff guy, you can get a demon shield, which um, will give him some damage protection, and you can get some upgrades to make him able to jump. But also, if you have the upgrades, transcend them to a demon prince. Um, the demon prince it turns into depends on which mark the demon got his. Um, if you have just built him in the beginning, he has no mark, and then if you choose a worship, you will need to rebuild him. That um, Lord will also have the mark of uh, the god, and then will turn into demon sprints of the um, mark. The Shadow Fiends will give an upgrade to the Dark Speech ability if you chose greater demons and make them buff, which is um, will decrease. Um, Morale, even to uh, allied troops, and result uh, the AMA effect will widely rental mental effect. Da, 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 da. Commanders are unaffected by dark speech, but no infantry can bear a whisper regardless of allegiance. So, does some morale damage and random debuffs, as it seems, to even to allies. So, use that with caution. Let's talk about the abilities you can get with lesser demons. It's your cloak of darkness. Um, area around the Shadow Fiends that uh, are infiltrated. Ooh, darkness. It moves with the Shadow Fiends, yeah. Okay, these are the Shadow Fiends. I'm, I'm starting probably to delete some units um, every now and then so that my PC doesn't die, but I think it's a greater hellspawn. Maybe we'll talk about it uh, right away and then I can delete it. Um, the Demon Prince also, uh, the Demon Lord can also get the Demon Prince upgrade um, if you have a relic. It also has the Flame Tongue, which is a starting ability. And once you get some um, upgrades, you can also get the ability to use Gaze of Murder, which is, uh, um, how should I say, a channeling ability to um, an enemy, which suffers in morale loss and also the health. Target gets lifted higher and higher, drains health over time. So. It's um, healing and health drain to the enemy, and he can also use portals once upgraded, as well as the jump ability. There are upgrades in the dark circle for him. That's your commanders. You get access to uh, commanders to the different d um, chaos gods if you chose a mark, but we will talk about them once we are there. Let's talk about the different um, unmarked units. Your furies, I told you in the beginning, are your only capping unit. These are very frail, but can get upgrades to um, be more effective. And they can jump right from the get-go. So um, really good to cap. They also have an, a little instability protection and in that they will, won't die as fast as other units when they get instable. Uh, when you get to tier three, you can get the crater warp spawn here. This is the uh, same or similar warp spawn. The, the whoa, sorry. The guys from the, the Thousand Sun uh, Sorcerer can sound, but it's a little bigger and probably tougher. Has no special abilities other than a morale decreasing aura around it, because look at this thing, it's like totally ugly. 
Once you have the special research, you can get demonic obliterators, which I told you are the standard obliterators from Chaos, which can teleport right away. Let's talk about your big units. Oh, Jesus. I need to delete some HQs properly so that this, this aura will stop to be everywhere. Um, let's talk about uh, the hell spawn right away. Here we have the hell spawn. The hell spawn is um, created in the Malikium, has is really slow, has some ranged um, abilities, can teleport, but can summon furies for no cost, and has some other abilities like the Wall of Fire, which is an offensively area of effect spell, as well as the Doom Blast, also a um, AOE spell, but which also does friendly damage, uh, friendly, yeah, friendly fire, you could say. Um, when this thing dies. Um, the Malikium will, Maledictum will come again. Let's kill it real quick. Then you have this animation and then it will turn back to the Maledictum here. Which then again can uh, research stuff and use abilities. Um, your other tier 5 units are your Crater Pro Scorpion and your Soul Grinder, both of which are vehicles. Um, basically only melee damage vehicle and a uh, ranged and melee uh, vehicle with some, um, how should I say, this is like a artillery unit as well, but this is like your uh, melee superiority uh, vehicle. Both vehicles have um, some morale decreasing aura around them. So you saw it, it, it was the Hellspawn which uh, killed my graphic card probably. So use it with caution in bigger games. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's that's about them, and you can get your demon prince to it, uh, your demon lord to transcend to the demon prince. If you have an unmarked demon prince, it will create the greater demon prince, which has an increased uh, flame tongue, has um, a hell mouth, which is a warp fire bolts. Let's use it here. It, it spits fire. And the uh, last one is Doom. Offensively close range ability to credit prince unleashes unholy wrath, mass murdering most units around him. So it's an area effect damage around him. Um, for the sake of showing later all the demon princes, I will need to kill him right now and rebuild one um, for Slanesh. But before we do that, we will talk about uh, ultimate units for the Chaos Demons only available if you chose uh, Crater Demons as your, how should I say, uh, apocalyptic event for the Crater Demons. Um, it's Argron the Red Angel, which is your um, Primarch, if I'm, yeah, Demo Demon Primarch. He is really powerful to the point that you can't really stop him. I saw one replay in the FFA where GetPR got him and all the people he, he basically beat the whole game just with Ankron so <laughs> once you got him the game is probably over he also um, is not um, compatible with another demon lord and um, the other relic units probably but I have the, uh, the, uh, the, the unlimited mod so that's maybe not a problem he can jump map wide he has a wide array of abilities like a force challenge a telekinesis blast force field he has a firebolt which uh, exactly does what it does a warp shroud creates a small dimensional rift in the ground what the heck is he doing ah he is attacking the other relic units because he don't like to have other relics units around are you are you okay now he has sometimes his own will so hope he's he's fine now um, we will need to kill him in in a second. Come on, listen to me. Jesus. So he has also the summon warp storm ability here, uh, which summons warp storm. Um, it's like a like orbital bombardment. Turn down and ground. Everything is fine. Just stay here. <laughs> he does like enemy demon princes. That's why. You can give him one of these uh, really sick swords which have different uh, effects. I won't cover here because he uh, doesn't um, 
follow my orders. And yeah, the thing is you only can call Arngren in once in the game. It's one of these apocalyptic effects, even for the lesser demons, you can only call once per game. Once he dies, he's dead for good. He will not come back. And one thing as well, if he dies, um, I hope it doesn't kill all my units right away, but it does hefty damage to all other uh, demon units. Okay, it kills all your demon units you have before instead of your greater demons. So I need to rebuild them real quick before we go to Slanesh. Give me a second. Um, we will need this and that. We will need... Oh no, we don't need her again. We will need this, this and this. So, okay. And also the lords. Okay. Good that we talked about Angron. <laughs> He also killed everything else. Nice. Um, okay, so that's about Chaos Undivided. Let's talk about... Okay, what, one thing I forgot to talk about. The um, units you will lose access to when you choose the mark is the Crater Warp Spawn. Um, and these two relic units that were here. The Crater Brass Scorpion and the other guy. So um, you won't be uh, able to build them once you chose an alignment. Let's talk about alignments real quick. Let's talk about corn. Oh, this is Nurgle. Let's start with corn. Where's corn? Corn is here. Yes, corn. Corn is the guy which is always angry. Um, has different commanders here. You can see that uh, Demon Lord has um, like uh, a mark here on the side, which uh, has increased damage because he is uh, corn. We will talk about the uh, Demon Prince later on, the Corn Demon Prince. You have the Herald of Corn, which is uh, your tier 2 commander you get access to, which has access to the Blood Frenzy, which is basically increased uh, damage, but um, no other uh, abilities will be available to use. So it's a silence um, in turn for greater damage. You can also summon favorite bot letters. You can see here, these are unique blood letters to uh, to him in tier three. You can they get even a ancient blood letter commander and have also the blood haste ability, which is similar to the blood frenzy, but makes them faster and enabling evasion to melee attacks. Okay, so they get faster and will be available to um, uh, evade attacks. The cost for the summoning is not only power but also some health on the herald. One thing I forgot to uh, talk about the demon prince is that the demon prince, all demon uh, demon lords have an aura, the demon princess as well, for allied demons to increase morale. So they are essential for every demon attack. Um, they can also be attached as well as the commanders for the different gods. They can also be attached for um, instability protection, but these don't have an aura around them as the demon lord has. So demon lord is very needed. The heralds as well, to be honest. Um, for corn, you get access to a, a special commander. You can only get one of each, which is a blood crusher of corn, which is a blood letter riding on a juggernaut. It has the abilities to uh, uh, fury of corn, which makes him. Uh, in frenzy state, which uh, you can't control them, probably. Situation proof can't, can't be used quite often, and the price is paid. Okay, it you can control him, right? Yeah, but it uh, gets aggressive and yeah, has some uh, power price and can juggernaut charge to an area and will knock back infantry units, but will also stop in any unit that is uh, big enough to stop him. Um, let's talk about infantry units. These are your favorite blood letters. So you can see these normally are limited to one. And in this uh, unlimited mod, they are not limited. The other basic units are your flesh hounds, which are cheap units um, of corn. You can um, yeah, spam them basically, uh, up to limited to three. Have Decent melee damage, no range damage, which is uh, true for most demons. They have the ability to eat, eat um, flesh like the Groots though. They are limited at 200 though. I think the Groots aren't limited as much. Okay, they can't even feed because the demons don't uh, left corpses. But if you fight a human kind or basically any f 
flesh <laughs> enemy they can feast on their flesh and uh, get additional HP up to 200 per model. In tier 2 you get access to the standard blood letters which have the same ability blood haste as the favorite blood letters. Yeah, melee superiority. Most if not all units of corn will have a slight um, health leech on melee attacks so they survive longer in melee combat. Then we have in tier 3 access to the juggernaut which is a demon with vehicle armor which has the same uh, juggernaut charge as the, the blood crusher but also has the ability to headbutt which is a single target um, knockback heavy damage ability um, available better use against individual enemies yeah very effective against all infantry types less effective against vehicles and buildings so it's headbutt to uh, let's say heavy <laughs> infantry and then you get in tier 3 also access to a um, blood sword of corn which is your defiler variant of corn which has an evil smile face on the beginning and some um, evil blades uh, does a lot of damage and has as all defiler variants of the chaos demons a mod morale decreasing aura around them your dedicated demon is the blood sorcerer which is basically the same unit the chaos marines have access to units that are limited to Corn only are the Infernal Juggernaut, the Blood Throttle of Corn, the uh, favorite Blood Letters, as um, are the Herald and Blood Crusher. All other units you can get access to even if you chose another mark. Um, one thing I forgot to talk about the worships of the gods is if you you have also this um, god rivalry. If you chose to, to worship Corn, you won't get access to the Slanesh units anymore and vice versa and also the units of Slanesh will g decrease uh, get decreased health by quite a bit it's about that they only have 60% I also have an, a, a graph here which I can show here which shows all the different units but um, I think I will uh, show it at the end when I'm got through the units okay the Bloodthirster as well you can get access to um, if you chose another um, how should I say worship allegiance um, other than Sonesh that is um, okay let's see the transcend to the demon prince of corn also a unit you can also only get access if you chose corn so you have your um, demon lord of corn here you have it looks really nasty to be honest it has this uh, corn symbol on top has access to the mark of blood which is um, by honor sacrifice and all demons around the prince receive corn's dark blessing so they uh, berserker state for units around them sacrificing health has the breath of chaos which most have which does this uh, area of effect uh, breath ability and he can also jump because he has big wings he also retains his ability to uh, increase morale of units around them all demon princes and demon lords also have um, detection so that's about it for Korn. Let's move over to uh, Nurgle. Nurgle we have here. All the units for Nurgle. Your tier 1 Nurgle unit is... Where it is? These Nurglings. A big number, less HP. Uh, units that look ugly have no real use if you ask me. Um, they have this cloud of flies around them which does morale damage and maybe some health damage as well but they die too quickly there are no use for them uh, if you ask me other than your tier 2 unit which is the plague bearers the plague bearers also have this cloud of flies and a slowing ability around them have way more health and uh, melee damage but they also can use the plague aura let's go away because the plague aura, aura does also um, friendly fire when you use it you have this all around them which does damage over time to all infantry units including your own units um, if you are not the Nurgle ones if you also if you chose Nurgle you, they get access to the noxious touch in tier 3 which is a how should I say a melee damage melee heavy weapon of some sorts mm, your Hero units is of course your Demon Lord, the Mark of Nurgle, which gives them increased health and health regeneration and the uh, ability to transcend to the Demon Prince of Nurgle and the Herald of Nurgle, which um, has 
like like most of them um, very big health and health regeneration can also be attached to instability protection as all heralds do and he has the nurgled rods the wielder dark blessing inflicted rosing miasma of disease pestilence extends around him similar to this which has uh, this area of effect um, damaging um, does it move with you Or is it just where? No, it moves with you and it does damage over time. Also to friendly units that are not dedicated to Nurgle. Um, here's your tier 3 uh, Defiler variant of Nurgle, which has like these ugly things around him and his face. This um, does some de decent melee damage, has more health than the Corn variant and has Nurgle's Rot ability as well, which is the same ability as the Herald of Nurgle has. A special unit for ah, you can get more of these. Special units for Nurgle are the Blight Drones. It starts with one, but can get up to three. Have um, decent range damage and can jump. So really interesting unit. Vehicles. I should um, also say that all vehicles of the Chaos Demons cannot be repaired because there are, yeah, not only vehicles but also demons. So it's like abo abominations that can't be repaired. Your T4 demon is the great unclean one. Everybody loves this guy because look at him. Who wouldn't love this guy? Um, he has a, a sword but also an aura around him um, which decreases morale, which like almost all demons do to be honest. He can <laughs> puke and he can spit. So the puke is like, yeah, like a puke and the spit is a spit. <laughs> all doing damage <laughs> who doesn't love Nurgle uh, let's talk about um, the demon prince of Nurgle real quick uh, other than that he looks really nice he um, can also use this breath of chaos which all demon princes can has the greatest Nurgle's rod which is an increased brand of the standard Nurgle's rod and um, the summon in front of rift is available for all demon princes and demon lords when you um, researched it. I think the research is also limited to the small demons, but I'm not sure. We will see in the tech tree. There's so much little stuff to the demon, uh, chaos demons, so sorry if I'm sometimes not really sure about everything. But okay, that's Nurgle. The opponent of Nurgle is Siege, so if you chose Siege, you are un unable to build plague borrowers and nurglings as well as the great and clean one if you chose nurgle you get access to the to your um to the dissector of nurgle to the blight drones to the demon prince and herald of nurgle as well as the ability to put a mark of nurgle on your shrines okay after nurgle let's talk about slanesh we have slanesh units here. They actually got killed, so I need to resummon them real quick. Um, okay. Your tier 1 um, units for Slanesh are your Fiends of Slanesh. These things are expensive, but start, on, start uh, already with 3 models, so you don't need to reinforce them. They are fast as hell and do quite a lot of damage against vehicles, building and infantry. Um, so you can use them to a uh, early harass to enemy listing posts, for example, or generators. Um, yeah, not a lot of, they have a lot of health, but uh, they cost really much. Your tier two unit is then the demonets. Very frail unit, but you can see it can be uh, big in numbers, have the lower ability, which um, makes enemies fight each other instead of you and the Pervane of Slanesh which is a yeah, dance like parody which gives them increased speed and dazes uh, enemies around them decreasing their accuracy and morale. Ally commander attached to squad will also do the dance and once you chose the allegiance of Sonesh, you can get favored demonets which is uh, tier 3 units i suppose which has greater allure which is basically allure but greater and also the greater pervane which is basically an increased 
duration, I think, and effect of the standard um, abilities here. Your heralds, your your hero is the herald of Slanesh, which has the ability to allure, but this uh, um, instead um, increase uh, create reduced accuracy of nearby enemy troops instead of letting them fight each other. Maybe because it looks more like a demon and less like a woman. Maybe I'm not sure. Um, your defiler variant is the Debash of Slanesh, which is the same defiler available to uh, the Emperor's Trojan, of course, which has some ranged um, and melee damage, like all defilers have. None, no special abilities other than the standard morale decreasing ability. Um, your big demon in tier 4 is the Keeper of Secrets, like a four breasted abomination of Slanesh, which has the greater allure. Um, yeah, hypnotize the prey, showing of the effects, both on the prey, heroes can take other actions. Okay, so they they fight each other and the, the, the keeper the can't do anything else, it's the same here. And turned on each other, protect the demon and left click. And target enemy infant, okay, this is target. This is also target and this is area of effect, so that's the difference. Let's talk about the demon prince. I forgot to research it. Oh, don't tell me. Okay, we will need to talk about it in a second. My maledictum got killed when I killed uh, Angren. So we will talk about the demon prince of Slamnesh later. Let's... I first need to rebuild the maledictum. Jesus. The maledictum uh, can be placed anywhere on the map, but you can see it takes it's free, but it takes forever to build. Did he start to build it? Now it started. So we will talk about Slanesh later, the Demon Prince. Um, you won't get access to uh, basically all the units if you chose uh, Korn um, uh, Worship. And you get access to uh, some units only if you chose Slanesh, uh, including favorite demonets, the Debash of Slanesh, and uh, Herod of Slanish, as well as the Demon Prince, we which we will talk about in a second. Last but not least, let's talk about Siege. Siege is one of the favorite shows, uh, the most people chose, because it has uh, yeah very nice units. The um, tier 1 units are A, your Screamers, which is the same unit as the Thousand Suns have, but with a different model. They scream all the time. Uh, fast moving melee units that can also melee flying units, which is interesting, and they can jump. The other T1 unit is the Pink Arrows. Every one can build a Pink Arrows, even if you chose uh, Nurgle, because this is your go to ranged damage um, to have Pink Arrows. Pink Arrows start uh, limited to one, later get uh, limited to three. Um, yeah, your go to ranged uh, unit, you really need to have this uh, in any build, to be honest can get access to the Bolt of Scenes if you uh, chose Scenes Worship in Tier 3, which is basically a heavy weapon for these guys. Um, your Tier 2 are the Flamers of Scenes. Flamers of Scenes have okay melee damage, uh, reinforce very slowly, have um, very limited um, range, but do heavy, heavy damage to infantry, heavy infantry and morale. So it's basically your heavy Flamers heavy flamer demons um, they should fire with their ugly uh, mouth on, on the bottom i think um, your tier 3 debasher or not debasher deceiver of singe is your defiler variant oh yeah okay okay okay. i'm not doing this anymore uh yeah which is your standard defiler um yeah breath of fire i think instead of um a uh artillery attack your Hero, your herald is the herald of Sinj, which is interesting. It's the ranged herald, which uh, flies around on the disc. Um, can, as all heralds, be attached to enemy squad to have um, instability protection and has two abilities: a gift of Sinj, which does random damage to uh, the troop in area, so all enemies in area receive random damage. It, uh, it, it can be really powerful, but it can also be uh, totally useless. And the uh, second one, Power of Change, which is really impressive, gives um, um, ability to read a suite of nearby friendly troops, increased armor piercing. So 
so it does more damage. The general aura this one has is increased damage protection to all guys around him. Um, all the heroes have some aura which I forgot to talk about, we will talk about it uh, in the end I think. And let's talk about the uh, Demon Prince of Siege. Here he comes. There he has, so this guy has some mobilities as you would so, um, think as a uh, Siege. It has also the breath, like everyone has the time paradox. Um, um, increases damage on his combat attacks and also be able to strike critical hits. It's a wall of wild magic, which is basically a uh, wall where enemies can't move through with knockback. He can also jump. Okay. This some more it looks more like a standard flame tongue to be honest. Um, and a lot of change is your tier 4 unit as well, the demon unit, which has very uh, 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 many abilities. He can jump, he has invulnerability, which makes um, an allied unit invulnerable for a amount of time. You have the winds of change, which is a uh, area of effect damage. You have the bolts of change, which is a targeted um, damage ability and warp time. Let's give me a slowest time, which is all units and structures receive an overall slowdown in all aspects related to time and lose access to their ability. So it's a really big debuff. Also area. Um, you won't get access to uh, most of the units except for pink horrors if you chose Nurgle worship. And you can only get access to uh, the uh, Herald of Siege and uh, Deceiver of Siege and the Demon Prince of Siege if you chose Siege Worship. Let's quickly rebuild, um, re get the Created Demon Prince for Sarnesh while I talk about, which I was, there was one thing I wanted to talk about. Yes, the Mark system. Give me a second. Yes, um, I will show you now on screen, now that I talked all about the units, the health um, penalty, if you chose the mark of an opposing god, you could say. Um, all units start with 100% HP, and if you chose the mark of an opposing god, they will get a HP reduction as well. You can, It's like you can't build them, but if you have already built them, they will get a big uh, reduction in health. Um, <clears throat> for most units, it's like, 75% I think, but uh, I don't remember. All right, I have I have it on my screen here. So it's, I think uh, it's for greater demons, it's 75%. For lesser demons, it's 60%. Um, special note to the Fiends of Sanesh, which only gets like 45% health when you chose uh, the opposing god, which is Korn. Um, special note as well to the Pink Horrors. Pink Horrors, as I told you about, is available no matter which allegiance you choose. So these guys basically are essential for any uh, Chaos Army, so that's why. And they only get a 10% um, decrease in health to 90% if you chose Nurgle. So you can still pretty much use them okay. That's about it. Um, you can see that some of the undivided units like the Cripple Warp Spawn and your, your um, Furies don't get uh, health penalties if you choose a uh, god. And if you stay undivided, all demons um, stay at 100% health. Let's talk about, lastly, to the demon god of Sinj, uh, Slanesh, the demon prince of Slanesh, because the um, research now finished. So it has a little smile on his face and some torsos of women around as is <laughs> Slanesh does. There's also Breath of Chaos, can jump and has the Curse of Slanesh. The Demon Sprint summons a Victus Cloud that effect corrodes flesh. Um, Suffers morale and does damage in area around. Very effective against all infantry times and commanders, which is similar to the Korn ability doing damage around him. Has it a nice effect? Ah, it's an area of effect, okay. It has this area which um, enemies will get a debuff. And it seems really fast compared to the other ones, which 
would fit uh, the way of Slanesh. Okay, so this was a mouthful and my PC almost died in the beginning, so I hope everything is all right. <laughs> um, let's look at my little... Cloud. Ah, one thing I want to do is show you the uh, um, apocalyptic event of the lesser demons, which is something I haven't showed you yet. They have greater demons. Where do I have it? Probably here. Yes. So once you are tier 5 with the lesser demons and has research portals, like you can your summon normal rift portals, you can unleash hell, which is um, the counterpart to Angron for the lesser demons, which summons a demon portal somewhere on the map. I want to show it last because I can't control it, like this hellish portal, which will summon in random lesser demons um, from the hell, from the warp which cannot be controlled by you. These are... I can try to control them, but they won't. I can kill them if I want. Um, but they will spawn randomly and will come out and will attack my enemy. And my enemy this time is only the stronghold, so it will die in the end. There is also a slight chance that some greater demons will spawn, but they might be angry. It's the description, so they will probably uh, attack allies as well. This portal stays around for quite a bit. It's limited in time, I think. At least it states so. I can't see it anymore. Um, it states that it's limited in time, um, but um, I've uh, been here quite quite a while and it didn't uh, um, didn't uh, go away. It destroys, but will seal itself after a short while. Um, I mean, a short while seems to be quite a bit. Now they destroyed the uh, HQ, so that's why I wanted to show it in the end. Um, but that's all for units and buildings for now. Let's talk about the tech tree. So we will see, I will see you in the tech tree where I will talk about the different upgrades and a way to tech with the Chaos Demons. See you in the tech tree. Okay, here we are in the tech tree. The tech tree is a little convoluted because there are very different um, requirements for some abilities. So it's it's a little bigger than I actually wanted, but I will, won't, don't want to talk about all the units and stuff as I have done that before. I want to talk about how to take up and all the researches that are special. Um, one thing I forgot to talk about is that the abilities in the Doom Pit are also disabled if you chose the allegiance of the opposing god. Like if you chose Slanesh, you won't be able to um, use the Korn AoE ability in the Doom Pit. Um, but enough of that for now. Let's talk about how to tech up. If you're tier 1, you need the lesser demon portal as well. The mm, How should I say? Decision lesser or greater demons, which Im implicit um, requires you to build a dark circle. So you have quite the requirements for teching to tier 2, but the tech itself is rather fast, I think. Um, once you're tier 2, you can build up the greater demon portal and this is also a requirement for tier 3. In tier 3, you need the Doom Pit, which is also available only in tier 3, to get to tier 4. And in tier 4, you can immediately, if you have enough power, it costs 450 demonic power, um, directly go to tier 5, which gives you access to Angron or the Hell Portal, the Warp Portal, you could say. Um, let's talk about researches first about uh, Dark Circle. The Dark Circle, um, you have to decide if you go for lesser or greater demons. Um, lesser abilities are on the left side, greater abilities um, are on the right side, and in the middle are researches that are available for both. So we see in tier 1 you have access to uh, an armor upgrade if you chose lesser demons for all your commanders and lesser demons and a body mass upgrade for your demons and commanders for if you chose greater demons. This is really good. This is, I think, completely useless. You can also go access an ability which um, gives increased movement speed and body mass to your demon lord, which is a good thing because it also gives you access in tier 2 to the wings which will make him able to jump. In tier 2 you also have access to uh, several abilities, uh, resources that are available for all um, um, decisions, lesser or greater demons. One that makes your um, 
your skulls, your souls, your souls, more durable and infiltrated. One uh, of two, the first of two upgrades for your furies, which makes also them infiltrated and um, close to immune to instability. You also have an uh, upgrade here, which makes all your demons more resistant to instability. You have one upgrade that makes your buildings tougher and give them a bigger regeneration. One of the upgrades you want to have if you want to play survival. And one commander upgrade. The commander upgrade uh, affects your different herald versions, your demon lord and your shadow fiends. Also very popular choice because your heroes are the backbone of your army. In tier 3 you can access the second uh, version of the uh, commander upgrade as well of an upgraded version of the structure upgrade. The second structure upgrade also gives um, a fire effect of your all your structures which um, will decrease not decrease will damage nearby enemies and it also increases the health and health regeneration of your buildings even more so it's really mandatory if you play survival in tier 3 if you choose lesser demons you get uh, access to a research that increases the build time of all your units as well as an upgrade that um, for your lost souls um, with which gives them higher vision range and detection range the more lost souls you have so if you have the maximum i think of four they get a quite a big side range bonus um, both of which i normally don't choose here um, if you chose bigger demons you have an uh, upgrade that gives a fear aura for all your demons um, all demons that don't have a fear aura uh, in the beginning and one here that increases the skin giving additional armor I think for all your lesser demons so the armor upgrade is later but I think it's a, a little better and you can get access to the research which will give you access to your obliterators in your HQ to build okay uh, I think this upgrade is isn't really useful as uh, if when you're tier 3 you will have access to greater demons which have an inherent fear aura around them in tier 4 you can get the second version for your instability protection upgrade as well your fury, fury upgrade which gives you a really really um, fighting capabilities for your furies and you can access the portal upgrade for both um, decisions and this upgrade um, both of these upgrades affect your shadow fiends this upgrade of lesser demons increases the number of shadow fiends uh, these horrors you can attach and this one increases the um, resistance of your resilience of your shadow fiends making them uh, giving them a little damage reduction the second building that can research stuff is the maledictum the maledictum let's see yeah that's the ability can research stuff depending if you chose lesser or greater demons if you chose lesser demons the maledictum gives you access to different war gear for your for your demon lord it gets an upgraded sword in tier three and the second upgrade for the sword in tier four it gets this uh, fear aura around him um, in tier three and this um, um, upgrade here which gives him the ability gaze of murder which lifts him up i think that it was it there's one ability that it gives access to sorry if i'm um, don't remember it right now and in tier four you get access to an damage resistance uh, war gear a area of effect flame i think uh, war gear and in tier five you get access to uh, yeah this is that the other upgrades here this one and that one are upgrades for your shadow fiends this one increases the damage and this one gives you access to this uh, shroud um, ability if you chose greater demons you have in tier 3 the ability to make your demon lord and your shadow fiends tougher making them more bulky you could say uh, two separate upgrades for each if you make your shadow fiends bulky you then can uh, access the a sonic whatever ability here and if you made your demon lord bulk here you can access the this shield ability via this upgrade one thing i forgot to talk about in game is that once you get ankron out of field you can get a research for him which makes him um, get a fear aura around him 
like a really big one, but it's more um, intense, fear more intense, morale decreasing if you are close to him. That's about the stuff I wanted to talk in the tech tree here. Um, one thing in general I want to talk once we are here is that um, as you lose access to, uh, I have uh, them, if you lose access to, uh, give me a second, to these uh, greater brass scorpion and um, soul grinder here, if you chose an, uh, any allegiance, the, in general speaking, the undivided path is stronger in the late game and the divided path, you could say, if you chose one of the different allegiance, is stronger in tier two and tier three as you get access to special units in tier two, most notably the different commanders, as well as some goodies for corn in tier three, slanesh in tier three, and so on and so forth. So generally speaking, undivided is really strong uh, late, while um, one worship is stronger in tier two to tier three. Okay, let's quickly go over the units. Is if there is something special, you can see that there are a lot of different um, capability abilities um, for your chaos lord. Depending on what you research, the ability to turn in a demon prince of different variants. Also, your shadow fiends uh, is really important. Speaking of commanders in general, um, the demon lord and the shadow fiends should always be built, as well as the herald of your. Uh, Worship of choice. These are must-have units. If for nothing else, you can attach them to a squad, the commander and the herald, to make them um, resilient to instability effects. Um, here are your lesser demons. I also put in a custom symbol so you can see which units are affected by instability. Um, yeah, you can see all the abilities I told you before. Interesting part is the distribution of detection. You have detections on your lost souls, your demon lord, and if you are corn, you have quite a lot of uh, detection as well as your uh, tier three commander, the juggernaut, can sniff enemies as well as the juggernaut itself. Um, you see later on the vehicles, and your hounds also can sniff. Um, Detect, can detect by sniffing uh, infiltrated units. One thing I forgot to talk about the, the horrors here. If you if they get killed, they spawn and spawn a blue horror. Okay, um, I need to change the symbol here because it's a slightly different symbol. I will do that. Um, but other than that, let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I explained all of it basically in the game already let's talk about let's talk about um the bonus units if you place a rival the tier one unit is some furies so the tier two unit you get access to are some horrors tier three begins to be interesting because you get access to another obliterator squad tier four is a hellspawn which is a little lame if you ask me but in tier five you get access to a soul grinder um yeah that's pretty much it for the tech trees. We will now jump over as always to the build orders. See you there. Okay, here we are in the build order document. Before I uh, will talk about the build orders, one quick disclaimer. I'm not really good at playing these Chaos Demons myself, so I try to get um, these build orders. We are watching uh, mostly get PR or, or get some ideas my own, which I try to to use um, against the AI with various success. So if you have some input to these build orders in, sp uh, in particular, please let me know. Um, the quote unquote standard way to go is with Siege as it's a really strong one. In general, you want to get two Furies and a second builder because your first builder is probably occupied building warp signatures around the map and annoy your opponent, as well as get your demon lord ASAP. You will build a lesser demon portal where you get um, your horrors and one squad of screamers. Horrors are first um, limited to one, but will get uh, uh, limited to three once you chose, uh, I think, the lesser demons. I'm not sure if uh, they also get increased um, to three if you chose the greater demons. Um, I will find it out. 
So that's why you first build only one. And once uh, you have this researched, you can get additional two. Um, as I said in the video, uh, in the in the safe game already, I highly suggest you build two warp signatures right away because they repay so quickly and build one warp signature where you want to attack basically. Um, and then also build an obelisk, but the obelisk requires you to build a dark circle before. Once this is all done and you're attacking the enemy, you can get tier two on the back of this. Also, you can decide to get the armor upgrade for your lesser demons, which is really nice to have. Early, you can also choose to, um, before taking up, get the mark of Siege if you want to. Another build order I tried out is uh, for corn, which is you can um, kind of compare it to a crude build of Tau. Uh, you standardly get two Furies and a Lost Soul and your Demon Lord, uh, as well as your Lesser Demon Portal and two Warp Signatures. But you will get two of these um, Bloodhounds. I think they are called Bloodhounds. And uh, one Squad of Horrors, so have some ranged um, support. And these Hounds are meant to hunt down enemies and move a little back and eat their flesh to get increased health. You then can add uh, a third one uh, later because they are limited to three. And once you have the Dark Circle upgrade, you can also build more than one horror. So you get a, a second one. I should mention here as well that uh, this will all be more than your 10 uh, cap of lesser demons you have with building one demon portal. but um, you will most likely use one of these furies in the meantime. If uh, if you use them offensively, you will probably because they are really frail. Um, in the corn, you also are, how should I say, I would recommend build two of the warp signatures in your base and then building one warp signature in the vicinity you want to attack, as well as the standard procedure of building a turret after the dark circle and the armor upgrade before taking up as well as um, for scenes you can choose to uh, use the scene alignment before or after taking to tier two the benefits for choosing an allegiance is are mostly in tier two because um, then you can build the herald then you can get the marks on your shrines for Solanesh I have a little gimmicky um, build order here which is basically uh, very how should I say, rushy build order. You want to get uh, only two um, of your furies because you want to uh, save money. So you will get, uh, will need to have your lost soul come back. You will uh, build a lesser demon portal and one warp signature because you want to save money to build one and then later two of these um, Siege, Siege, Slanesh uh, Horrors here, Slanesh Fiends. Um, they these guys cost three supplies, so you can only build two before you are supply blocked. And then you will want to build after um, your Demon Lord and your Lost Soul to um, make them more stable on the field. Um, the one warp signature you build is probably next to your enemy, so you can retreat with your fiends and then attack again. If you lose your furies in the meantime, replace them by horrors to make this little all-in um, attack which this is um, more viable. If you want to uh, continue the game or need to continue the game, add in more warp signatures either around the map or in your base. Get the dark circle, maybe a turret around the map and tech to tier 2 once you chose um, minions. You maybe can also choose uh, greater demons here. If you want to stick in tier 1 around a bit longer, you also want to get the upgrade here. As for the, all, the others, you want can get these um, the worship of Slanesh here or in tier 2. For Nurgle, I couldn't find a good way in tier 1 because the Nurglings just die in one shot for most um, enemies. So there is, in my mind, no way to play Nurgle in tier 1. Um, that said, you can mix up all, this, all these units in tier 1 as well. You don't need to go with one... Um, with one style of playing. So this is just a style I suggest if you want to go and the worship of one god, but you can mix them up and stay undivided if you want to, um, depending on the situation, which is one thing that makes 
Chaos Demon so strong. There's also a way to rush to tier 2, which is very, how should I say, dangerous, or you, as you don't have a lot of defense uh, at all as Chaos Demons. Your Warp Shrines, um, your Demonic Shrines don't have any damaging ability. They are just there and increase the health and health re uh, morale regeneration of your demons, but not doing a whole lot else. Your tier 2 rush is basically you only build two um, furies, get your portal as well as your dark circle out immediately, as well as three um, of your warp signatures. You get some increased income, put them in your base, not around the map, and also preserve your lost soul because you want to have it. You immediately chose one of these, probably greater demons, if you want to go for a later game. That's why you want to rush to tier 2. And then click as soon as you can on the tech um, button in your HQ. This is kind of viable if you want to go for a Nurgle strat because Nurgle is only really good in tier 2 and onwards with your Blake Burrows and your drones in tier 3. So it's dangerous as you are very vulnerable in the start in a team game. And if you spawn in the back, you can do this and try to conquer the map. Uh, once in tier 2 or tier 3. Yeah, there's also another little small rush build I will show you in a replay at the end as a little, as a little, how should I say, icing on the cake. I have two replays um, now, one where um, you see Gepiar playing Astro here with the Siege uh, way. You will see that it's really strong and one where Gepiar uses a little cheese uh, against myself. So your info treat now. So see you guys in the replays. And here we are in the first replay I told you about where Gappy R plays versus Esrahil. Esrahil was one of his main factions, the Orcs, against Gappy R as the Chaos Demons, of course. You will only get the Lesser Demon portal before jumping over with his Lost Souls to the enemy. Um, the thing about the Warp Signals I told you about, uh, he don't seem to know or don't seem to uh, uh, use pretty much. So I should say Astro Hero didn't face Chaos Demons before, I think. So this is not the best, um, how should I say, game um, Astro Hero will probably put up in, the, in this regard. Here we see the Lost Soul will decap this point. And once it gets shot, it will use his face shift ability to um, get no damage. And then he will probably has the cooldown to jump away. Come jump little soul. And you can save it and bring it back to base without building a, another soul and building your demon lord right away. Um, this will cost you some time on your demon obelisk. Your soul is rather slow. So having another soul will, would be, uh, he would be able to put the demonic shrine ASAP. So this is one thing I normally do. I get a second soul right away and not after your demon lord. Getting a faster demon lord has also some benefits, of course. He now gets some horrors out. They are limited to one squad, so that's why he gets them only one squad. He um, captured or is about to capture all the points around the space, as you should, and then build on the demonic shrines for your primary requisition income. If he had demonic shrines up, um, I don't see the time, they would have already paid for themselves right now. So uh, the, the warp signatures, they would already have paid for themselves right now if he would have put them up one or two. Now he starts to move at front with uh, the pink horror and the demon lord. He reinforces the pink horrors and um, don't have the resources to build something else at home for now. Uh, the demon shrine is putting up here. They uh, talking about some bugs as Rio has, but it's okay. Um, and one of these you will see that uh, here he puts the um, lost soul to his furies to uh, give them some uh, morale regeneration. And here we see the first uh, little attack. He will probably lose his flame tongue ability in a in a second. But other than that, you have these um, horrors here, um, they, which should not be tied up in melee damage. 
in melee. Here you see the flame tongue ability, which it has a lot, a very big knockback. And here you can see that um, health loss of the furies isn't as big as for other he demons, so that's why they have this. Um, that's the so-called um, instability protection they have. The Nurgle stuff has this as well. So he now needs to walk away. Now losing, almost losing the morale on his squad. Um, al although being in the vicinity of the Demon Lord. The Demon Lord aura is either really, uh, um, how should I say, small or uh, not very effective. He got the Screamers out as well as the Dark Circle right now. The Dark Circle um, cried early and gets the minion ability to be able to build more minions. So he gets up to uh, 10 um, squad size from one portal. Now we see him moving here. He has a lost soul rod with him, which is always a good idea. So he will probably put a warp signature here in a second. There we have it, warp signature. The area to build around it is about this size, so not as big. Now he has a second uh, horror squad and a screamer squad, so this is now your attacking force backed up by this warp signature. The warp signature itself is really frail, so you want to protect it. And as enemy you want to kill it, because not having the warp signature here will decrease the enemy's income and will him give him not an uh, area where he can uh, pull back. You can see the damage on the Horus also stated only effective against vehicles building an aircraft is also um, okay against infantry. Now he just turns back, gets morale, <coughs> uses his uh, lord to uh, annoy the opponent a bit. Here you see another <laughs> annoying thing is that you get blue Horus for uh, every killed pink horror, so it's uh, interesting. Using your furries around the map to cap and to uh, um, annoy the opponent. Don't know if he gets an upgrade. He has the third uh, horror available once one squad dies. Once a fury dies or one of his other squads dies, they are in immediately. And here you see the screamers now tying up the, the range squad, which is really nice. You need to reinforce them though. They are really expensive, but they are worth it. These horrors, for example, are as expensive as a Space Marine. So that's that's how you play. And as he got the Dark Circle already, now he has a Demon Claw Obelisk right at the enemy's face. The range of the Demon Obelisk is around, I think, up to here. So he um, prevents his enemy from getting the relic while having his own. The Screamers are getting reinforced. Um, he can, yes, he clicks tier two. Um, yeah, he doesn't get the upgrade. He could already get the upgrade. So they are talking a bit about um, the game. Astro Hero <laughs> asking some questions. Um, but that's pretty much a good uh, base to start with. You have this um, this obelisk here, your signature, and then now can to start a creep forward. It's interesting because you would think the demons, um, the obelisk also has an aura of a building, um, would be all around your all around your base and then um, returning and stuff. The thing is they need their morale aura so badly that they mostly fight around their own buildings. Which is funny if you ask me. He's now tier 2 and will probably build the Herald of Siege in a moment. He also has the Worship of Siege, so he can now build the Herald of Siege. Can deep strike floating. Ah, I wanted to talk about the auras of the different um, heralds. I think corn gives what what you would expect. Corn gives you damage. Um, Singe gives you uh, damage protection. Nogle gives you health regeneration and slanesh. <sighs> Don't quote me on what slanesh gives. <laughs> More probably also some um, speed and stuff. And the Herald is here, he now puts in the Screamers, second squad, no, the first squad, it's not reinforced here. Doesn't mm. have the back econ best economy here. He also brought one squad of Furies at the front to, f to cap. And the Screamers died, so he now has <laughs> the squad cap to get another um, horror at the front. Furies probably gonna die here as well. 
getting up another warp signatures here to fortify his position. You see here the Demon Claw Obelisk has quite a big damage and big range. So now he is all set up and yeah, this you should not attack a uh, forward base like this. What you should do if you see something like this, you should attack the uh, enemy uh, base because the demons have one problem that's defense. Their sh demonic shrines are not a good defense. Um, they are mobile in a sense that the units move fast, kind of, but things like horrors and stuff are slow. So um, attacking, counter attacking is probably the way to go when you have the enemy has some forward position like this, um, just as a heads up. Fighting this head on is difficult, in particular because the Herald of Siege has this range damage reduction and range damage uh, resistance um, for enemies around. So he tucked the horrors to uh, one of his, to the Herald of Siege to one of his horrors and his um, commander to the other horror, so they all have instability protection and he probably yeah gets the shadows shadow fiends which is um problem with um, unit cap you should get a second um lesser demon portal yeah one thing i i wanted to talk about lesser demons portal or yeah about the credit demons portal i'm not sure because they are limited to two but the lesser demon portals have the same thing going for them as the as the Necron generators, they, like, the more you build, the longer they take to build. So the first one is really quick, the second one takes some time and the third and fourth are really, really slow. Here, yeah, this is the random damage, uh, random damage uh, AOE from the Herald of Siege. And the later part here also uses the um, damage increasing ability. Now they are talking about if you can possibly kill this. He also adds some eyes of the beholder, which I, if you ask me, would not do. But that's that's pretty much game. Um, if you look at um, at the hero side, yes, he has some units, but the problem is economy. Um, Gap has his relic and probably will move on forward. He also now has the shadow fiends um, available to him and all the stuff in the world. He could also get some upgrades, which he should do. He can start to sacrifice requisition for power, which he does. Uh, he should have done the small, not the big one, to be honest, and put the small one on Overwatch. It takes longer, but it's um, more cost effective. Um, is there a lost soul? If there is a lost soul on the front, um, you should build a demonic friend, and now we see the basically the last fight here. They even <laughs> later try out if the Held of Siege uh, does when she died. This is the damaging um, ability, so it has this blue effect. And yeah, and nowadays just talk about if this is uh, killable or not, if the Held of Siege is really um, that good. You see like some of the stuff of the Chaos Demons is borderline OP. One is the range damage resistance of this guy. You have like two squads of shooter boys and a um, war truck and a banner, but the banner is unupgraded, but you look how much damage he, he can he can uh, soak up. Yeah, the rest of the game is pretty much a mop-up operation. Um, KPR has the advantage right now and will finish the game out eventually, but that's um, all I wanted to show for this game. So you can see how to uh, use the siege uh, game. He now gets the third squad, I think. Yes, so he has the maximum amount of horrors around here, like the uh, pink horrors, three squads, and your shadow fiends with some horrors. Your <laughs> your herald of siege is some kind of horror as well. So this is what you go for siege. If you want to uh, have melee units, you want to you would add the screamers of siege. If you are faced by um, heavy, uh, not heavy infantry, but a lot of um, melee infantry, you may add the Flamers of Siege in tier 2, which do area of effect flamer damage, as I told you. So this is the way you play Siege. Okay, normally I would call it uh, the day here, but I have one last replay for you where I have a little cheese for you, which I would not do in a separate video. So I will put it here as a little icing on the cake to finish up this guide. So see you in the second replay. 
here you are in the second replay where Cappy R plays uh, Chaos Demons against me playing 13th Company. He actually wanted me to um, use a um, bike rush. I not doing the fastest bike rush, I'm doing kind of a sustainable bike rush, adding more uh, wolf dens. So I will won't have up the fastest bike, which is a problem you will see. For the build he does, he only gets one furries and a lesser demon portal and then gets his demon lord right away. And yeah, I think I will show you what's happening first and then we'll explain you what is happening in general. So you're getting a really fast demon lord to make a fast approach to the enemy as well as building only a lesser demon portal. You could, if you ask me, also add a um, warp signature or two because they would um, repay already in this short game. You get a demon shrine, then you put your furies into the demon portal because they can get deep strike, deep strike, which is something I also forgot to tell you. The lesser demons and greater demons can almost all be deep strike to the enemy base. So he gets a squad of horrors here as well and probably should get a third squad here. At any moment did he... I think he got his... No, here it is, his lost soul. You can attach a lost soul. Yeah, you get the squad of screamers to some uh, extra melee squads. That's what you want. Either the screamers or the, the bloodhounds, but probably the screamers. I didn't get any points because I'm 13th company rushing, so I'm still in the process of building up. Um, I'm almost here too now and will be able to um, build some um, stuff in a second, but here you see what will happen to my buildings. Freeze attack and they get melted before I can build anything. Um, if I had some units on the field, I could maybe fight this, but you can see the damage to the building is real. I, <laughs> I'm not able to do anything really. I will be able to get one squad of s bikes out properly and that's pretty much it. And I say, what the heck? Um, now I can explain you what, what's happening. The Furies have a passive ability to their attacks, which um, adds a random debuff to the enemy, including structures. And one of the debuffs is reducing enemy armor. And as your buildings can't run away from the attacks of your Furies, the buildings will stack up negative armor and die in no time. <laughs> that, that's it. So the way to counter this is uh, basically Kill the Furies. Furies are really frail and will die really fast if you um, have something on the field. So this is your perfect counter to any tier 2 rush build, which is something I did. So <laughs> game over. <laughs> little, little cheese build here. Um, maybe I add it to the build orders. I think I will. It's, it's a little small. Uh, build order really really uh, straightforward I will I will add it there so you have it as well if you want to it's like a hard counter to any um, to any tier 2 rush including the really fast uh, tier 2 rush of 13th company so it hits really really early um, probably a little too strong the way to fix this would be to um, have the uh, um, debuff of furies not affect structures that would be uh, the best way because you have different um, stuff to kill buildings with which are intended it's uh, the fiends of Sonesh. that's are your building killers as well as your pink horrors in a sense okay with this little cheese i want to um, finish this guide of chaos demons um, if i forgot anything if i told you something wrong and you know it better please tell me because this is quite a long guide and a lot of stuff the uh, diagrams i have shown you in the beginning the health bonuses and uh, what was the second one the health percentages if you um, chose the different gods are in the google drive as well as the tech trees and build orders as usual yeah i want to finish this guide as always with uh, thanking you guys for watching and see you in the next video bye bye